Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube video. Thank you. Today I've got the EA Triple Eight family. I got Generation One, Generation Two, Generation Three. EA Triple Eight is a four-cylinder petrol gasoline turbocharged engine, which is for the VAG Group vehicles that has been designed by Audi. With the latest technologies such as direct fuel injection and multiple injection in some Gen 3 engines. Thin wall engine block and very compact aluminium block which enable this engine to fit into a car as small as a Audi S1 to a car as big as the Audi Q5. Variable valve timing and lift for the intake and exhaust valve have allowed changes of all three generations of the EA888 engine to be modified to handle BHP from 160 BHP from Gen 1 engines to 320 BHP what the VW Golf Mark AR pulls out today from the EA888 engine Gen 3B. EA888 engine drive went from a belt driven train to a 100% chain driven engine. The design has been used since 2008 and is currently used in 2021. The generation 1 that I've got here is the CDNC engine, the award winning one. <laughs> yeah right, for the generation 2 on the EA888 family We've got the CCZ Generation 3 engine. We've got the CJEB engine here. This is the CDNC engine, or well, in the Generation 1, it's the uh, CDNC. You also get this in the CDMB, well, produced for the Audi A5 in 2008, and then uh, it goes on to uh, 2015, which uses the Audi Q5 in the CDNDs. So we just take off this cover. Okay. With the generation 1, it's similar to the generation 2 and 3, it's direct port injection and the only difference is um, this oil filter is different on the generation 3 but the same on generation 2 and this, this airflow wiring is different. So with this one, it's time, in, time chain driven and visually it's all the same. This is for the Audi A4, A5s, a few VWs. And this was the first one they made in the generation one for the E888 family. I want to give you a quick tip about this engine here. You, um, you must have heard about this one, where this is the worst one that was built. Yeah, however, this one won an award. <laughs> the worst one for anybody. Uh, money wise, time wise, anything. It's the biggest problem. Why? The piston rings, they got it wrong from the factory. And from the factory, they put in a smaller piston ring and it used to leak through and it used to uh, rip a rod through the block. And to replace this, you have to take out the engine. There's no two ways about this. You have to pull it out, you have to split the head, get into the middle, take out the crank, get to the uh, piston rings. And once you have the piston rings, you just have to do the other one. This one's the most costly one. The whole generation one, two, and three. So I want to give you guys a tip now. The tip is, if you've got this generation one engine, make sure there's always uh, something that Audi can do about this one. Thanks to North America, they had a lawsuit for this engine. Anybody who's got this engine under 10 years, or if it's got a certain mileage, you could go to Audi. They give you a free oil test where you drive it for 655 miles and you take it back to them and they check the oil level. And if they, they got some sort of test, but they'll pay for it. So I'm not sure guys, but double check with Audi if you got this engine and you got the oil problem if you're putting a litre of oil under 655 miles or something like that and it's uh, asking for more oil go to Audi this is the generation 2 EA888 family and this is the CCZ one this is commonly found in the Mark 6 GTI and the Audi A3 this one the, they go horizontally and unlike the generation one where they had the piston ring issue they sorted that out for the generation two however 
if you've seen my other videos they do have a common problem but it's not as bad as the generation one the generation two's problem is they have a weak um timing chain tensioner but nothing major with the timing chain issue you could have that swapped and there's the ways to indicate that unlike the generation one there's nothing you could really do the factory design just made it wrong on that engine but this engine here it's not too bad just a, a few issues but nothing as bad as the generation one high pressure fuel pump direct fuel injection again now on to the ea888 family generation 3 this is a cgab engine this engine here or the block of it won an award with a mark 7 gti so it's the same engine exactly the same all the pistons are the same the conrad um, the head, everything's the same. It's just got a different, uh, bigger turbo on it. But this is the Generation 3. Have a look underneath this one here. Okay. They're all similar. They all got these common issues here. On the Generation 3, they don't have no wiring for the mass airflow meter. They have the oil filter on the block itself. They, again it's the same direct fuel injection unlike generation one and two where generation one the piston rings generation two the timing chain tensioner on this one they sorted out both issues it still run on the high pressure fuel but if you look at it it's all the same as the generation one the layout everything same but on the generation three you get two magnets Unlike generation 1 and 2, you only get one solenoid magnet and this one has two, so it has two spool, spool valves as well. This map sensor is on, on the generation 3, it's on the manifold, inlet manifold, on the generation 2, the inlet manifold, on one of the pipings at the bottom there. On the generation 1 and 2, there's only one wire, the, the sensor that r runs for the generation one and two the oil filter wire generation three is got a few more wiring three wiring so there's not much difference in the blocks apart from these little little tweaks still after uh, 10 years old it's still smooth still nice i've obviously had the these issues sorted out i've got the engine and what kind the piston ring so this one's still nice and smooth Besides the piston ring issue, it does have common issues like the PCV valve is very common on these generation ones. Coil packs are known to go and just general wear and tear. Besides that big issue, little little issues, that's all it has. Nothing really, really major apart from that. Uh, the piston ring issues, if you swap your uh, chain at the right interval with these, it's really good and it'll run forever. 70,000 miles on the clock and it's still running sweet. This is the generation 2 TC rod. It started up, it sounds nice. It's got about say um, 80,000 on this engine. Very quiet. Um, common problems again, PCD valve, foil pack, high pressure fuel pump. A lot of common problems with the engine, I must say, but if you keep it good, it runs really good. This is a very good engine as well. This one's the Generation 3 engine. This is the newer engine out of the three. And this is got about the same mileage as each of them. But this one, however, sounds a bit more rougher. And with this one, I don't know in its history, it's not been looked after. But I think what's happened here is where you can hear that noise. The inlet manifold. These ones are about a high lift, low lift, and I think the, the inlet manifold is worn on this, which is why you can hear that noise. So that's another issue, I'd say, with the Generation 3. There's not too many problems that come out, but i got a feeling this is going to be an issue. But if again, you can swap this when you do the timing chain on this one. And these are very good, very good engines, economy-wise, but again, the no problem that's come across is the water pump issue, which was a quick fix. And generally, this engine is the one they mastered out of the three. Right now, I'm driving the Audi A5, the Generation 1 engine that won the award. 
and the one that got hit with the biggest lawsuit. So with this engine, I've mentioned the biggest fallback of this engine, but besides that, it drives really nice. You get about 25 miles to a gallon with this engine, and it's the common problems like you get with wear and tear, electronic water pump thermostat leaks, um, crankshaft position sensor goes, and a few other little issues. But this engine, I think Audi had to have made that little problem for them to be able to go and do what they've done with all the other engines. Although they had the issue with the piston rings and there was a big major problem, the good thing they had that problem early because then they rectified that problem and then from that they carried on with the design of the engine which paved the way for the Audi S3s that you see, the Golf R's that you see that produce up to 330 bhp today. So. Besides that problem, I think the Generation 1 engine, when it first came out, besides that problem is, uh, you know, there was reasons why it won the award in the first place, because it's a really, really good engine. Now I'm in the Generation 2 engine, the Audi A3. I could say this engine here was early days. Um, it had a lot of um, consumption as well on the oil, but it didn't have the problem like the Generation 1 with the piston rings where uh, the, it leaks through eventually and then the rod will rip through the block but with the generation 2 engine it did have the issue with the tensioner which I've mentioned however with this uh, generation 2 engine it's not the best with the fuel consumption I've averaged about 20 miles per gallon and again it's got the same common wear and tear issues as the generation 1 and 3 with the thermostat leaking, PCV valve and um, crank position sensor and few other little bits and bobs. With the Generation 2 engine, this is when they start throwing the engine into the Golfs, uh, Golf GTIs firstly, and the uh, Audi A3 S-Lines, the Skodas and the Seats as well. In the Generation 2 engine, they also put it into the Audi A1, eventually into the S1s as well, with a small engine block, so they could see that they got away with it in the Mark 6 GTI and the Audi A3, so they even put it into the Audi A1 as well, and the Audi S1 as well, and the Audi S3, the VW Golf Rs. So from the Generation 2, when they rectified those little problems from Generation 1 and 2, they start putting it into the Golf Rs, and uh, Audi S3s. How they did that is basically with the engines, with the S1s, S3s and uh, Golf Rs, they would just have bigger or lighter reinforced steel crankshafts that have lighter oil pumps and operated conrads and everything else operated. Uh, that's how they put the EA888 family into these sort of vehicles. Now finally, I'm driving the Audi a4 the generation 3 engine here by far this is my favorite engine out the uh, generation 1 2 and 3 why that is mainly because of the fuel consumption i average between 30 about 32 miles per gallon on this engine drives really really nice it sinks nice and well with everything else on the drive of it the engine feels more stronger with the generation 3 engine I gotta say they rectified the problem from in, uh, generation 1 and 2 and they made it better and what the, what the aim was to reduce the fuel consumption which I believe they did and how they did all of that I think they put in lighter oil pumps, lighter crankshafts and seals and everything else. But one major issue between Generation 1 and 2 that Generation 3 doesn't have, on the Cambridge, they had a, a screen and that screen always used to fall out and go in and block off the oil passage on the Generation 1 and 2. But on the Generation 3, they've got uh, some sort of roller system. It's got better oil consumption as well because it doesn't have much oil where you need to keep topping it up every 600 miles or southern. I've driven the Generation 3 and I've topped up a litre of oil after about 6,000 miles. So I think that issue they've rectified. And obviously with the Generation 3, you see uh, it goes up to 290 bhp with a Mark 8 Golf R 
or the Audi A3 S3 on the 8Y, they can produce up to 330 bhp. So it is really, really good. With the Generation 3, they've moved on calling it now the Generation 3B, which is being used in the Golf Mark 8s and the Audi A3 8Ys. It's the same design as how the chain is driven on the two balance shafts and that's how the drive train is set up. Design, everything's all the same. Obviously, they've changed the internals inside there. Generation 3 is my favorite engine to drive because it just drives a bit more smoother. Everything sinks together. You get the best miles per gallon and you get a few less issues and you're not going to have the catastrophic issues. The Generation 2 is not so catastrophic if you act early and with the Generation 1, there's no nothing that could help you unless you take it all out, taking apart a whole house and rebuilding again. So exactly that's what you have to do with the Generation 1 engines. The Generation 1 engine, it is good, but once it goes wrong, it's very costly. It's still very expensive to buy today. Out of the three engines, I would say the Generation 3 engine is the best. Um, with the EA888 family, what do I think of it? I think um, made it better from Generation 1, 2 and 3, and I think they've perfected it over time. But do I think they've perfected it? If I look at the EA113 engine, I think that has some good features as well. The noise, for example, the vibration is less than what I feel with these metallic chain engines. I have the EA113 engine here, the predecessor to the EA888 family. This is a four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine, direct fuel engine. This is the engine that's got the cam belt on the left side and a chain on the right side. So what I like about this engine, for an engine that's like 16 years old, through the video you may be still able to hear that chain but it's not as bad as what you hear with the EA888 engine mainly because of that chain but this is the engine that paved the way for all these Audi S3s and Golf R's and everything else but obviously they went 100% chain after this engine they ditched this EA111 engine for the EA888 engine which got 100% change chains that even run the balance shaft on the chain as well. I'm going to show you uh, EA888 engine generation 3B also. The EA888 engine still carries on till today it's even gone into the market and what they're calling it now is the EA888 gen 3 engine. I've got one here and I just want to show you lot the chain noise as well. Now, this one here is the Generation 3 B engine. They call it the B and they use it from 2016 onwards. But I don't know if you could hear it through the camera, but me, I could hear the chain, the metallic. It's, it's faint, but over time, you get wears and wears and wears and you could hear, just hear it. Even I've heard it on vehicles that are 2020, you know, through videos, basically, you can still hear that chain. But, the uh, EAAA engine generation 3 is still carrying on, they're calling it the B now. Thanks guys for watching my video on the EA AAA engine family, generation 1, 2, 1, 3. It take me all day to explain every last bit of it, the aluminium block, the board, the cylinders and everything else. But I hope I've given you enough basis of all the information and common problems with the EA AAA engine and I think they are really good engines if you compare them to a BMW engine with a Vanos for example and see how much issues they've had or the Mercedes with the M54 engines where they've had so many issues with the timing chains and everything else. The Audi and the VW have had their issues but I think over time they've stuck to it and they've perfected it and it's getting better. But my opinion, I think they should use the design of the EA AAA family um, the design of it with a chain, but I think they should replace the chain with belts But I don't know if that's going to cause less friction to get the power that you get with the engines today But that's just the only problem I hear. I hate that little metallic noise, but I think it's a very good engine Thank you guys for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe